The ideas expressed in the following presentations are those of the speakers and do not necessarily reflect the views of ACI or its committees. ACI web sessions are recorded at ACI conventions or other concrete industry events and will be made available for viewing free of charge for one week. Thereafter, they will be archived on the ACI website or added to ACI's online CEU program, depending on their content. The next speaker is Muzai Feng, and he's going to talk about how to reduce settlement cracking in reinforced concrete. Uh, good afternoon, my name is Muzai with the University of Kansas and today I will talk about our experience with settlement cracking both from the field and in the laboratory and how we think we can reduce settlement cracking. Now before we start I want to thank Osama al -Kazak, Ryan Bradman and Iman Ibrahim for their contribution to this project. Uh, their hard work laid the foundation of the laboratory results I will be presenting later. Uh, the pre presentation will consist of a brief introduction on settlement cracking, followed by some uh, field observations that I want to talk about. And after that, I will introduce a laboratory test that we have been using that allows us to easily quantify settlement cracking performance of different concrete mixtures. And after that, uh, how effective different technologies are in terms of reducing settlement cracking. And finally, a summary. So the mechanism of uh, sediment cracking has been discovered, dis discussed so many times today, so I will skip through this, but I do want to make a note here that as a, a solid part of the concrete uh, settled down and when it's uh, being obstructed by rebars, this, this arc action will create a tensile stress in the section above the rebar in this area. And when the, at, at any point of time, if the tensile stress exceeds the tensile strength of the concrete, you have cracking. And looking, uh, thinking back to uh, Oscar's example, when your concrete doesn't set, and your, your, your settlement is essentially building up tensile stress, that's why you see settlement crack within one or two days after construction. Uh, another point I want to make here is, in most of the cases, those build up uh, tensile stress is not enough to crack concrete. However, uh, the stress will create a, a plane of weakness here. And later on, when your shrink shrinkage kicks in, when you start to load your, con uh, load your bridge, when you start to have a thermal exchange, the stress builds up and the crack will open afterwards. Uh, settlement cracking can be a major uh, problem in terms of durability because the cracks will occur directly above the rebar and they will run parallel to them. Uh, so you can potentially expose the whole full length of the bar to the environment. Uh, giving access for uh, deicing chemicals, oxygen, moisture to uh, reach reinforcing steel and cause corrosion. Now, so what what my factors affecting sediment cracking are, uh, uh, as uh, previous presentation has said, uh, the shallower the cover you have, the more likelihood you have sediment cracking. And likewise, when your bar size increases and when you when you use high slum concrete, you you're more likely to have sediment cracking. Now with those background information, I want to talk about some field observations that we have made over the past, de past decade uh, regarding settlement cracking. The first is slump, how slump changed in the concrete industry over the years. So here are the bridges that were involved in our study in the state of Kansas. We, I have the uh, average slump of the whole bridge listed as a function of the construction date. And we can see for the bridges built between 1984 and 2004, uh, the average slump increased very slightly over the 20 years. And over the two dec almost two decades period of time, we have barely had any bridge with four inch or higher slump. Uh, however, when we add bridges that were constructed after 2005, we see a big jump in the slump used in those concrete. And the reason being is that early 2000 is when contractors started to use a uh, pump to place concrete, and to make sure the concrete is pumpable, uh, KDOT start, uh, allowed uh, bridge deck concrete to have slump up to seven inches. And you know, based on my very limited experience with very limited number of contractors, when you tell them the maximum allowed slump is seven inches, what they get from you is the target slump should be seven inches. And on the job side, half of the concrete will show up with an even greater slump, like eight inch, nine inch. Looking, at, looking back at the figure, we can see 
when the slump increased from two inch to four inch, that's only two inch difference, two inches difference, uh, the tendency for sediment cracking almost doubled. Now, as with, as with any other problems we have with concrete, uh, construction practice is very important. You can have a perfect design mix, but if the concrete is not properly placed, the resulting structure will suffer. Uh, now, to be specific on settlement cracking, what we care most is, set, uh, is consolidation. Uh, the better the consolidation is, the less the concrete will settle and less likely we'll have settlement cracking. Uh, in state of Kansas, what, how we consolidate con uh, bridge that concrete is we use a, what we call gun vibrators. It's ser uh, essentially a, a series of vib uh, spot vibrators uh, mounted to a, a mechanical frame, and you can lower, lower it and raise it to consolidate uh, concrete. Uh, this, uh, this setup has been given us very satisfactory consolidations over the past years, but I want to uh, discuss two examples here where even with the best machine you, uh, available, you can still make wrong of the, uh, in terms of consolidation. First example, is the, uh, the, the placement is going out of the screen. And we can see the guy, this guy is operating the gun vibrator, and then the concrete is finished by the screening machine. And note how these three construction workers were, wor were working on the sections of concrete that has, has already been consolidated. And as they walked around in that section, they would leave many holes, their footprint. And those holes were simply removed by a screening. They were only covered by screening, and they were never consolidated. And as a result, one year after the construction, we uh, saw many uh, transverse cracking. Now, a little bit back in, background information here. We, we're looking, what we're looking at is a scaled map of the bridge. And all those lines you see here are actual cracks that we found on the bridge. Now, in a laboratory environment, you can control your environment conditions. You can control the geometry of your specimen. And you can single out any factor that you want to study that causes cracking. For example, when you want to study shrinkage cracking, you can do the restrained ring test. and you can you can be pretty sure that the crack is caused by shrinkage. However, on the actual bridge, the, it's, it's so complicated that it's, it's very hard, if ever possible, to point to a crack and say, this crack is caused by settlement. But that being said, we, we, we have guidelines, and we, when we add more information, when we have more information, we can make an educated guess, make an educated speculation of, about what caused the set, uh, cracking. To be spe uh, specific on this bridge, it is so young, it's only 12 months. So we can say, OK, uh, drying shrinkage by itself shouldn't cause this severe cracking. And we can also see the uh, cracks are predominantly transverse to the, cra uh, to the bridge deck, and they are spread in both positive and negative moment regions. And knowing that the contractor had consolidation problem, we can safely say that settlement has contributed to a large part of the uh, cracking pattern in this bridge. As a comparison, we can see another bridge that is eight years old with good consolidation. We see very few cracks compared to the previous bridge. Uh, here's another example. What happened here is the GAN vibrator was, mount, mount, uh, was mounted on a spring-loaded frame. So what happened is the contract, uh, the uh, construction worker lowered, pushed the fr uh, vibrators down to consolidate the concrete. And when they let go, since the frame is spring-loaded, it pops out. And it was the rapid removal of the vibrators resulted in a series of holes left on the concrete. And these holes were simply covered by the screening. And as a result, we can see one half years after construction, we see predominant, predominantly transverse cracking on this bridge. So after seeing these uh, patterns over and over again in the field, we, we, as researchers, we naturally came to the question, what can we do to reduce settlement cracking? And to do that, first we need to have a system that can have a test method that can allow us to quantitatively analyze the behavior, settlement cracking behavior of different mixes. And after years of trial and error, uh, we came up with this, with this uh, specimen. Well, so you can see it's a one foot by one foot cross section and eight, inch, eight inches deep, which is very typical for bridge decks. And we, we mount a number six bar in, on, the mold, on the side of the mold. It's a, a number six bar is a very typical as top reinforcement in bridge decks. 
and the bar will have a one eighth one one eighth inch co clear cover. Uh, the reason we use the very thin cover in this mode is we want to consistently have settlement cracking uh, with with regular concrete. We have tried two inch, uh, one half inch covers, but with those modes, even the worst concrete, we couldn't. With the worst concrete, we couldn't get uh, settlement cracking. Uh, the water cement ratio, water to cementitious material ratio used uh, across the study are 0.45. Uh, we have 27% uh, paste by volume, and the concrete temperature ranged from 68 to 75 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, so we fill the uh, mold in two layers, and after each layer, we uh, consolidate the specimen using a spot vibrator at four points. And then we finish the surface, surface using wood trowel and followed by magnesium trowel. After that, we pla pla place a hard plastic plate on the top of the specimen to protect the surface. Then we wrap the whole uh, specimen with a plastic sheet to prevent uh, evaporation. The specimens are kept in the uh, environmentally controlled room at 73 degrees Fahrenheit of temperature and 50% uh, relative humidity for relative uh, humidity for 24 plus or minus one hours. And after that, we simply remove the cover and look for settlement cracks. And to, to make sure that uh, shrinkage caused by eva evaporation does not affect the cracking pattern, we uh, measured the relative humidity develop di directly above the specimen surface. And what we found is that uh, throughout the entire time, uh, the relative humidity above the uh, specimen surface was maintained maintained above 95 percent. And one day after the casting, we open the cover and look. We look for cracks that are parallel to reinforcing bar to the rebar and that the, the run parallel to the, to it. And when we see a crack, we use a marker to draw a line parallel to the crack. And the results we get from each specimen is represented by the crack length divided by the bar length. The bar length will be 12 inches across the board for this test. Uh, we have three specimens for each mix, and we average them for, uh, to get a representative result. Now with this test, we went ahead and tested different, uh, uh, the effectiveness of different technologies for the, uh, how, how, how well they can reduce settlement cracking. The way we did it was uh, we have a reference mix. It's, it's called a control mix. Then we have make eight or more mixes using, using the same mix design. Then we simply vary the slump using different dosages of superplasticide or high-range water reducer. Uh, here we can see the results of uh, control mixtures. Uh, we can see on the horizontal axis as the slump increases, the crack length on vertical axis increases. And when we draw a trend line and 25% offset lines, we can see there's a scatter in the data as the slump changes, but the scatter is uh, fairly tight. There most of the data points are within the 20% offset re uh, region. The technology that we evaluated include in, uh, synthetic fibers, uh, viscosity modifying admixtures, supplementary cementitious material, ma materials, uh, internal curing, shrinkage reducing admixtures. Now like, let's look at the results. Uh, synthetic fibers would reduce sediment crack by uh, improving the tensile stress of the, the tensile strength of the concrete and improve the overall toughness of the concrete. And here we can see when we add uh, fiber to the concrete, uh, the sediment cracking is largely reduced. We went on and tested three, three other types of fibers, and what we found is that uh, the sediment cracking performance is relatively independent from the type, uh, type of fibers used. And then we went ahead and uh, reduced one of the fiber dosage by half, and what we found is that sediment cracking performance is not very sensitive to fiber dosage. And viscosity, uh, second technology is viscosity modifying admixture. So the way this works is uh, when you add VMA to the concrete, uh, when the concrete is being still, being static, such as when it's sitting in the form, hardening, or when you're taking a slump test, it will behave like a low slump concrete. So you have the benefit of low slump concrete, such as less bleeding and less segregation, and when you take a slump test, it'll, you'll get low slump. But when, on the other hand, when you're working the concrete, such as when you're pumping it or when you're finishing the concrete, the concrete will, will behave like a high slump concrete. So you get the benefit there. You can, you can have the high workability, high pumpability. So here we can see when we add VMA to the mix, 
we see a moderate reduction in the settlement cracking uh, length. However, keep in mind that if you want uh, the workability of a six-inch mix with uh, with the VMA, you can get by, you can get away with a two-inch or three-inch slum concrete. And if you take that into account, uh, the VMA is a very promising uh, technology in reducing sediment cracking. And the third uh, technology is uh, supplementary cementitious material. Uh, this uh, SCMs would reduce sediment cracking because of the the slag and cement, uh, silica film used in this study was finer than cement. So the finer particles give us extra surface area which will reduce bleeding. And as we can see here, we we'll add 30% slag to the concrete, we see a, a reduction in sediment cracking. And when we further add 3% silica film to the mix, we see another reduction in sediment cracking. Uh, next up is uh, internal curing with lightweight, uh, saturated lightweight aggregate. Now how this works is uh, when the water bleeds to the surface, uh, the absorbed water in lightweight aggregate will be drawn out, which will con uh, reduce the rate of settlement. And, and we can, as we can see here, uh, when we add lightweight aggregate, the uh, se uh, settlement cracking was reduced. And lastly, shrinkage reducing admixture. Uh, how this works is uh, we, we don't have a solid theory yet, but we're postulating that uh, SRA will cause an, causes an early age expansion in the concrete because it promotes the formation of uh, potlandite. Uh, th that expansion may have uh, counteracted the tensile stress uh, developed at the plastic settlement. And uh, to sum, sum up my presentation, uh, plastic settlement by itself or combined with other factors will lead to early age cracking in bridge decks. Material properties, concrete cover, and construction practices affect the magnitude of settlement cracking. And lastly, to reduce settlement cracking, you can increase the cover thickness, you can limit the highest slump, and you can use a crack-reducing crack technology. Thanks. Thank you. Yeah, just a question. Um, previous um, presentations talk a lot about water cement ratio, but it seems that your research concentrated on using one single water cement ratio. Yeah. yeah. Has there been any intent to look at lower water cement ratios and see how that compares with the performance in your test? Not as of now, but definitely would, we can do that in the future. Is there any reason why not? No, we're just busy evaluating different technologies. Okay. Just speculate, speculating. Okay. Yeah. Just one question. I remember a picture. Can you go back to the picture that you have? Go back. The, the bridge? Yeah, one of the bridges. Uh, yeah. I just have a question. I saw a picture. It looked a little bit different. I think far back. That one. This one? That one. Okay. No, no. This one? Oh, the, the second one. Okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah, okay. This yeah, one? That, yeah. that one is skewed bridge. Yeah, yeah. It so is skewed. Then how, so then is the, the cracking aligning perfectly with that transverse bar, or the cracking has a little bit of a skew too? Uh, uh, cracking is cracking. on top of transverse bars. So it's on top of the transverse bars? Yeah. yeah so the bars not, are, are not the Bars are transverse. Yeah. Just Thank you very much. <laughs>